panic, I won't make you answer it in public. <laughs> when you have a problem like all the chaos that's going on in the world right now, is prayer your go-to first or your last resort? Which is it? You don't have to be embarrassed, I won't make you answer that in public. My favorite prayer story was in ministerial school when we were broken up into groups of about a half a dozen each, and we were each given a project, and I don't even remember what that was anymore, but it must have been a challenging one, because we all got together and tried and tried to come up with something, and it was getting nowhere. And finally, someone in the group said, do you think we should pray? And, <laughs> this is ministerial school, right? And someone in the back of the room yelled out, oh my God, has it come to that? <laughs> last resort instead of our first go-to. I've been guilty of that myself. Anybody here think you have to try it yourself first by your human effort before you praise? Are we aware of the power that we have in us when we call it forth through prayer? You know, the whole unity movement was founded on prayer. We used to call it practical Christianity, because it works, it's practical, it's actually scientific. Remember, was it Larry Dossey that wrote all the books years ago on the scientific experiments on plants that were prayed for and other plants that weren't, and the plants that were prayed for did much better? Prayer is practical, it's scientific, and it works. But in unity, we pray a little different way from tradition, we don't beg a man in the sky to please come down here and fix this. We don't go on and on trying to convince a God being to help us. We call it forth. We call forth the power of the presence. And we deny that the appearances have any power over us because we affirm that there is a power in us that is so much greater than that which is in the world. And so today what I want to do is look at how we pray at unity and look at what gives prayer power. All prayer is good. I'm not saying there's prayers that aren't good, but some prayers just have more power. So I'd like to begin with a, another question. What's the difference between how you pray in church and how you pray in a casino? Yes. <laughs> in a casino, you really mean it. <laughs> you know, then, what's the difference there? You know, I grew up with memorized prayer. Our father Martin lived all the way there. And we used to pray really fast in the church I grew up. The faster you prayed, the more you felt it was. And if you didn't pray fast enough, you might lose your place. You know? <laughs> the Hawaiians call us whites. Howleys. Howleys, because... There's no breath in our prayers. They actually had a name for us. So what is it that gives prayer that breath, that energy? Well, it's our feeling nature, the divine feminine. You know, our thoughts, our prayers, we sing. That's the masculine, the mystical marriage of masculine and feminine are the thoughts and the feelings have to go together. So all the thoughts and the words directed, it is your feeling nature that gives it the punch. Do you really feel it when you're praying? And that's a divine feminine. Now how you pray reflects your belief in your relationship to God. So when you're praying, if you're, that's why the latest book in the unity movement is how to pray without talking to God. Because if you're, if you're talking to some being out there, you think God is separate from you, way out there. And somehow I've got to convince this being that there's a problem here. Don't you see it? And convince you to help me. And so that's, that's the prayers of separation. Now, if we believe in the one presence and the one power, the prayer takes on a whole different meaning. Charles Fillmore who taught about prayer along with his wife, Myrtle, said, we become a race of praying beggars. Can you imagine he said that? We become a race of praying beggars, looking for a handout consciousness. Wow, it almost sounds like an insult, doesn't it? 
But what he was saying was there's no power in begging some outside source. But when you know you are one with the all-sufficiency of the divine. I love that word, all-sufficiency. I'm one with the all-sufficiency of the divine in every person, in every situation. Wow, that's power. And speaking that and calling it forth is power. When Jesus taught about the kingdom, he said, seek the kingdom first and all else will be given to you. Wow, sounds like winning the lottery. Where is that kingdom to seek where all is given? It's a state of mind. It's a consciousness of awareness of your union with the divine. That's the state, that's the place. So we do not ask to change the world, but we ask to change our mind, our consciousness to see it differently. Altogether, no oops, together oops. <laughs> the third thing is not to give power to the appearances. That's why in unity we have a denial before an affirmation. The denial doesn't say, I deny that, that there's an elephant in the living room. We deny that elephant has any power over us because again, we're one with the all-sufficiency of God. There's enough power in us that that can't harm us. And so let's practice a prayer. Say it's a prayer for prosperity. We'll be like Charles Fillmore, not be a beggar. We deny the appearance of lack. If I say I am prosperous, my little voice in my head is saying, oh, no, you're not, and you see your checkbook. But if I say I, I release all fear of lack, I turn away from the appearance. I know my oneness with the all-sufficiency of God. I call forth my abundance from the universe now. You see the, the feeling in that. You can feel the difference between, oh, please, God, I'm in so much trouble. Have you seen my checkbook, God, fix this? <laughs> and I call forth my abundance, for I am one with the all-sufficiency of God. Let's practice that prayer. For this church, let's say, this church is one with the all-sufficiency of God. Together, this church is one with the all-sufficiency of God. God's love moves in and through this church, manifesting abundance now. Divine love moves in and through this church, manifesting abundance now. I know I change the words whenever I repeat something. Just hang in there with me. Right. Pray for me, right? <laughs> Let's pray for guidance. When I worked in Silent Unity, the main prayers people would call for healing, prosperity, guidance. Those were the three main, and then there were many other reasons people would call, but those were the three main things. So guidance. Of course, if you think you're separate from God, we think ourselves dumb. I don't know how to do this. I can't do this. What am I going to do? But I am one with the divine wisdom. I release all fear of appearances. I am one with divine wisdom. I am guided in everything I do. And then we ask for that guidance. And we watch, look, and listen. And the universe draws to us those divine ideas, those things that trigger that knowing this is what I need to do. This is where I should go. This is the answer. So we don't deny that it's not with us. We deny the appearances and we call forth our wisdom. Would you repeat with me? I am one with divine wisdom. Together, I am one with divine wisdom. Divine wisdom guides me now. Together, divine wisdom guides me now. So we got prosperity, guidance, healing. Healing was the third thing that people ask for more than any other prayers, especially right now. Healing for the country, the world, healing for everyone you know. And let's, before we talk about how to pray for healing, let's hear from some of the greats. Charles Fillmore, the co-founder of Unity, said, there is nothing to heal, only something to know. His wife Myrtle healed herself of tuberculosis by reaffirming every day, I am a child of God, 
I do not inherit sickness. That's a denial. I am a child of let's all say that together. I'm a child of God. I do not inherit sickness. There is nothing to heal, only something to know. And Jesus himself said, Know the truth, and the truth will set you free. And those words have been put away. Instead, we've been taught, you're miserable sinners, accept me as your Savior. That's not what Jesus said. Read it over, the whole New Testament. He said, know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Your union with the divine. He said, I am in the Father, and the Father is in me, and I am in you, and you in me, and the oneness. Repeat with me if you're comfortable. Divine love moves in and through me now. Together. Divine love moves in and through me now. Igniting every cell in my body with healing light. Together. Igniting every cell in my body with healing light. And then you can pray that for others as well. Divine love moves in and through them now. Fill in the blank with their name. Igniting every cell in their body with healing light. A scripture in the book of Job of all books to have this. One of the most powerful scriptures. You will declare a thing and it will be established for you. Wow. Declare a thing and it will be established. When Jesus approached the tomb where Lazarus lay, he said, Lazarus, come forth. He declared it. When he went up to the cripple at the pool, he said, pick up your mat and walk. He declared it. He didn't say, oh, please. Oh, please, Father, help this person. He declared it. He prayed with the power. So feel the difference between begging and declaring. Oh, please, God, I'm so miserable. Help me, God. Or... The power of divine love moves in and through me now. Every cell in my body opens to renewing, healing, restorative power. Do you feel the difference? When you pray with power, oh, I love prayer. I get passionate about it. Absolutely obnoxious about it sometimes. I love the power of it. The first rule of prayer, though, is intention. You want to be really clear. What is this? that you desire, or if someone is asking you for prayer, what is it that they truly desire? And there's a great story that explains this. It was Wednesday night church service, Wednesday night church service, and it coincided with hunting season, which had been going on all week. And so the pastor came in and he asked, okay, who's bagged a deer? Nobody raised their hand. He said, now wait a minute, I don't get it last Sunday, Many of you were missing because it was the first day of hunting season, and I had the whole congregation pray for your deer. One of the hunters in the back groaned and said, well, it worked. They're all safe. <laughs> <laughs> when you pray, be clear. What is your intention? What do you really want? And I always say, be careful what you pray for. You might get it. Have you ever prayed for something and then wished later you hadn't? Or understood why it wasn't given you by the all-knowing universe? <laughs> was, it, was it Garth Brooks wrote a song, Thank God for Unanswered Prayers? <laughs> Be careful what you pray for. Okay. Jesus said, by your faith you are healed. Pray with faith. Pray believing. You don't get what you pray for. You get what you believe. You get what you expect. You get what you can see and visualize. All together now, oops, oops. The centurion's son said, only say the word and my son shall be healed. The woman bleeding said, if I only touch the hem of his garment, I will be healed. When you put your request in the prayer box in the back of the room, you are touching the hem of the garment. You're saying, I'm releasing this into the higher divine presence. I'm trusting. I'm letting go and allowing divine love to move in and through this prayer request. By the way, when you place requests in the prayer box, we pray for them here, our prayer team. 
and we send them on to silent unity that holds them for 30 days in their prayer chapel. You have people meditating in that room constantly. Nobody can leave the room without someone else coming in. There are people in there meditating 24 hours a day for your prayer request after we've prayed for a year. And you notice our prayer slips are small. There's a checklist or blank to put in what you would like prayer for. All there's room for is the first name and the category. There's not a lot of room for the stories. And some people don't like that because they want more room to tell us the story. But it doesn't mean we're uncaring. It doesn't mean us or silent unity that we don't want to know the story. But if I'm praying for you, and you have someone that's hurt or sick, and all I'm visualizing is blood on the highway or broken bones. Or, you know, do you see how that prayer, I'm going to be focused on the problem. I want to pray, pray for the perfect expression of healing, wholeness, abundance, guidance, whatever it is that you've requested prayer for. I want to focus on that for the person, not the problem. Because what's the golden key? Whatever you focus on, when you pray, don't focus on the problem. It'll expand the problem. Focus on the presence and the power, and that is what will be expanded. So when you pray for others, we don't pray to change others. How many here would love to pray to change someone else? <laughs> or oh, change my husband. Or oh, change my wife. Oh, change that person that's driving me crazy. No, we pray to change our consciousness so we see it differently. We pray to see the truth in this situation. <laughs> Repeat with me, and you can insert whatever name you want when I say the word them. Divine love moves in and through them with the transforming power of grace together. Divine love moves in and through them with the transforming power of grace. And then it's between them and God what happens. You call forth the presence. You call forth the power. It's up to their free will now what to do with that. And finally, prayer is followed by action. You know, we don't talk about sin and hell and damnation and guilt and all that here at Unity. We know that's not what the message is about. But Jesus said, go and sin no more. What did he mean by that? He wasn't talking about sin in the way that the interpretation of that word when it was translated. And he didn't mean it the way it's been misused. He meant, if you continue to do what you've always done and continue to thought what you've always thought, you're going to continue to get what you've always got. Don't do that anymore. Don't go into that limited thinking. Don't go into that fear-based separated thinking. Don't take actions from that. Shift, change into a higher place. And then he said, pick up your mat and walk. In other words, move out of that stuck place so those things don't keep happening. Change your mind. Change how you see it. Change what you're doing. Don't just sit there move, take action in the direction of your dream, in the direction of your goal, and the universe will rush in to support you. And finally, I'd say the best for last, the scripture that says, abide in me, abide <coughs> in me. In other words, where do you abide all day? Do you abide in fear or in your awareness of your unity? In what the news or the media is saying or in the truth of divine presence? Do you abide in your spiritual practice or in the lower energies of fear and separation? My favorite, again, I've always got favorites, don't I? Prayer story. I think we have to pray authentically, too. When I give people prayers, I try to say, now reword that into the, your words. Because if somebody gives me a prayer and it's not in the way I would say it, even Charles Fillmore, Charles and Myrtle had the most flowery, wonderful prayers, but they don't sound like I do. So I always have to reword them to sound like me. Otherwise, I won't feel them. There was a guy that went to a prayer practitioner 
And this prayer practitioner gave him a long, flowery, beautiful prayer and said, now you go home and say this every day. And she printed it out for him and he stuck it on his mirror, but it just didn't sound like him. So one day he took it down from his mirror, and every day after that he said, oh hell, I'm well. <laughs> and he got better. <laughs> Let's go into prayer together. Let's pray believing whatever you came in here today. Let's turn our focus away from the concern. And let's turn toward the power of the presence in you, in the situation. All that is needed is right here, right now. We simply call it forth. Divine love moves in and through you now, bringing forth that higher energy of divine grace to heal what is to be healed, to reveal what is to be revealed, so that your life may glorify God. You are the power of the presence. You are divine love and expression. And we are so blessed in your presence today. In the nature of the Christ, we pray. Amen.